I do. A couple of housekeeping notes. Number one, if you're listening to the audio version of this after the fact, we do live stream every single Boca Podcast episode over at youtube.com slash Boca Podcast. So make sure you jump over there, subscribe, turn on notifications, and join us for these conversations because, of course, one of the benefits of the live stream is that you get to come over and ask questions and comment. And if you want to make us laugh, you can send us funny emojis too. So come join the conversation. And then to that point, for those of you that are streaming live, watching live, please do ask questions, comment, engage with us, get involved in the conversation today. We're going to be talking about something that's actually highly relevant in this current market. Um, how to move from wedding to brand photography. And uh, I'll introduce our guest here in just a second. One other quick note, as I promised you all I would do before every Boca podcast episode, I made a small donation to Charity Water. This is an organization that I've been donating to for years. You can see the receipt up there on the screen. It's just a small donation, but the cool thing is, like many organizations and ultimately efforts at outreach, even a little bit of money can go a long way. And, and I just want to share that with you as a, as a way to encourage you to look for those opportunities, whether in your local community or through these national or international organizations. So just want to throw that out there. I think that's all the housekeeping notes. Let's actually bring in our brand new guest for today. I've got Abby Grace with me. Abby, thank you for coming and hanging out with me. Yeah, it's my joy. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be fun. Conversations with you are always good. Always good. <laughs> well, that's very gracious of you. I know that that we got to hang out, what, it's been, I'm trying to think, about a month and a like half ago. A month ago. and a half, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we actually went to dinner. You, myself, and Jill, who produces our show, runs digital marketing for us at uh, Photographers Edit, Boca Podcast, all the brands. And uh, we got a chance to sit down for, for dinner and, and chat kind of life and business. And mm -hmm. um, I, I appreciate the fact that you're not only willing to share in that format, but then also come on here on the podcast and share with our community at large because you've got a lot of experience. And we've actually known each other in the industry now for a little bit. In fact, I, I mentioned the show at United. When was the last time I'm trying to was that the first time that we connected? Was that one of those conferences? I think, I mean, I, I started going to United in like 2013 and yeah. I remember you were always a staple because you always hosted the, like what the happy hour or whatever mm -hmm. it was that you guys did. And I think, yeah, we must've met like 2014, 2015, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Through, through show it. And man, it's one of my favorite conferences in the industry. And this year is kind of the last time that they're doing it yeah. for photographers. We're going to head to that here soon, but um, nonetheless, I really appreciate you making time to come hang out with all of us and share with the community. We are going to be talking about how you made your move from wedding photography into branding photography here in just yeah. a little bit. But the way that we normally launch the podcast here is to talk about brand position. I think it's a good opportunity for you to introduce your brand as well through this. So um, give us the 15 second version, if you can, um, yeah. brand position statement for Abby Grace Photography. First of all, I love this question. When I saw this in the email that you sent over to me, I was like, this is genius. This is an exercise that everyone should have to do. And then I wrote mine out and then I timed it. So it's definitely 15 seconds. Um, <laughs> well done, so well done. I am a brand photographer for high performing sales driven creative small business owners. And I specialize in marketing minded imagery that helps my clients reach and sell more to the people who need their products and services the most. Whoa. Okay. So let's break that down. Like take it yeah. kind of step by step. Um, start with just the first part. Yep. So I'm a brand photographer for high performing yeah. sales driven creative small business owners. So I specialize in working with um, business owners who are in like the top one to 5% of their industry. So I've shot okay. for Caitlin James, Mary Morantz, Ashlyn Carter, Natalie Frank, the, like the like people who are the best in their industry mm. and who have numerous streams of income who are um, maybe not just a service provider, but maybe they also run an agency and they have some kind of educational component. They're speaking from the stage. They have an online shop. They have courses. They have funnels. And so because of their diverse collection of income streams, they also have their numerous media channels where they have content needs. So it's not just, oh, I need some cute updated photos for Instagram. It's that I I need images for Instagram and also Instagram stories and also Instagram ads and then Facebook ads and my sales page and my email funnel and my yeah. newsletter header. Yep. So it's like numerous different formats that we're shooting for. And so I'm shooting for them in a way that helps stop their audience mid scroll and helps them sell like drive um, audience action. So not just like a double tap, but hey, we want you to double tap. And then I want this image to be compelling enough and help communicate what the words in the caption or the words in the the ad are saying to, to actually drive action to click on, let's say an opt in page or um, to download a freebie or to sign up for a webinar or something like that. So my images are meant to pair 
with the text content mm. um, to help drive that audience action. And I like the way that you described that too, the stop the scroll, because we all mm. know, I, I know I'm guilty of it, just like very, very quickly moving yep. through content. And so it's on you to create content or help these individuals create content that will stop the scroll, literally grab yeah. people's attention. And then, like you said, not just double, double tap, because it's one thing to get likes. Um, in some ways, I'm kind of glad that Instagram is phasing out the, the kind of like centric feed, because mm -hmm. the reality is that as far as brands go anyway, just getting a double tap on an image means very, very little to our actual yeah. revenue at yeah. the end of the day. We actually need engagement and ultimately a response to a call to action of some kind. And so yeah. you get to take part in that process. Yes, and it's and it's fun because it's a study not just in like being a good photographer in the same way that like wedding photography isn't just can you operate a camera well wedding photography is can you operate a camera well but also do you have enough like people knowledge to read situations well to be able to direct the energy well on a wedding day so brand photography is knowing how to use a camera well and then understanding marketing um understanding communication and understanding advertising to to some extent and then also understanding the mindset of the consumer who you're producing for because it's mm. not just you're not i was actually just talking about this with a client a consult call yesterday that, that it's I'm not producing for the gratification of the business owner I'm actually producing for the for for their client so for my client's client so it's getting into the mindset of my client's head but then also getting into the mindset of what their consumer needs so like what problem are we trying to solve and how can we communicate that with the mm -hmm. photos we're taking I, and we could spend forever here but I yeah. just have to <laughs> highlight but well I have to highlight something that you said because it's so important we've been talking about this here on the podcast a bit but it bears repeating which is that what we do, as much as photographers, whether consciously or subconsciously, kind of get stuck into doing something for themselves, what we do ultimately at the end of the day is for the end client. And we really yeah. have to, it seems obvious, but I, I, if we just look around our industry, I'm sure you've seen it too, you've got a lot of experience. A lot of photographers' behavior, their websites, their social media feed, even the, the photography that they're actually creating is mm -hmm. not necessarily for the client at the end of the day. And I know there's an easy argument to be made for doing things for ourselves, and I can appreciate that, but we just need to make sure we don't lose sight of the fact that we actually have clients to serve. And to your point, we need to pay attention to what their needs are so that we meet those. Yeah, and I think some of that came from, I feel like it was like mid, it's like 2006 and on, there was this big push for like personal branding and mm -hmm. personality marketing. Mm -hmm. And I think that the some of that got lost in translation that people heard personality marketing and personal branding that it's all about you. And that's not what personal branding is about. Personal branding is about finding the pieces of you that resonate with your target audience and then maximizing on, on communicating those to attract those clients that you're dying to serve. So the purpose of personality marketing and person personal branding is is service um the opposite of that is celebrity and like if you're looking to make uh, a big deal out of yourself then that's a totally different track but like the mm -hmm. per if you want to do personal branding well as a means to serve then it's not like here's everything about me and like here's why you should choose me because i'm the greatest it's here's why you should choose me because i understand you and because i understand you i am more equipped to to serve your needs and to help solve whatever problem it is you're looking to solve so I think this is a great segue to my next question, which has to do with customer experience. Mm -hmm. Is there a big idea that has driven, and I know that you're working, you've not just photographed weddings for a very long time, but now we're working with photographers as your clients. Is there a big idea that drives the customer experience that you're trying to create for your brand? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I mean, we, like, we're ultimately here to to help like, make cli our clients' lives better. Like, mm -hmm. um, I believe that way too many small business owners spend too much time searching for like the perfect photo. So like combing your inbox or like searching hard drive after hard drive to find that photo because it's like the perfect one for this one at either that or they're using the same like five to 10 images for their brand over and over and over again. And my desire is to step in and be like, let me take that off your plate for you. You have so many other things that you could be doing with your time. And Michael Hyatt says that any for any small business owner, any business owner in general, there are really only two to three things that only they can do. And so my hope in being a brand photographer is to step in and take one thing off their plate so that they can get back to doing the work that only they can do for their business. There are... Um, I, I like personally struggle with pride and thinking like I'm the only one who can do 
X task the way that I do it. So like I'm the only one, oh, this is so ridiculous. But at the beginning when I was like, I didn't want to outsource anything. I was like, I'm the only one who can go to the post office the way that I can. <laughs> and like truthfully, I hate going to the post office. Sure. Like why would I keep that on my plate? But it's it's a pride thing. Um, like I'm the only one who can edit the way that I can. I'm the only one who can design albums the way that I do. And like Newsflash, Abby, there are a lot of other gifted humans in the world and like the amount of difference that it would make to take 3% of the work off of your plate and what that would what that would free up my time to do is like, it's not even a question of is it worth it to outsource your editing, to outsource your album design, to outsource your inbox, which we recently just did. And so like when I let my people, like the people that we outsource to, do their best work by handing off something like editing or my inbox, it enables me and my husband to do our best work. Like give them the stuff that I'm not so great at so that I can focus on the stuff that I am really great at. And that's mm. my passion as a brand photographer is to take that piece of the the content production off of their plate. So I, this is, a, yet again, you're setting me up beautifully. I can tell you're a teacher already, but um, you're, you're setting me up for my next question, which has to do with time management. You touched on outsourcing and delegation, which is, as we talk about here at the podcast, one of the most important components of time management as a mm -hmm. photography business owner. Is there any other idea or a number of ideas that have driven your ability? And, and as I say this, I'm going to actually pull up your Instagram account here. Um, and this this photo, the beautiful photo of your family, is there is there an idea that has driven your ability to better manage time and kind of balance time with family while also trying to run a business? What's that been like for you? Yeah, I mean, we so I read the book Deep Work by Cal Newport. Have you read that? I've not read it yet. No, but I feel I, like I, we talked about it. I think we talked I think about we it. We did, back and I think reset. I literally have it on my my Kindle, and I just haven't read it yet. So yeah, good reminder. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is the best business book I have ever read. Like hands down, most recommended book. I used to like when we used to do mentoring. It was an assigned reading before we started, um, because reading deep work changed everything about how I think about what matters most in business, and not just like. Not just from an essentialism, you know, the book Essentialism by Greg mm -hmm. McEwen, not mm -hmm. just from that kind of standpoint, like, but really like what is the impact that I desire to make with my work? And like what are all of the things that are keeping me from making that impact? The things that are distracting me that may not feel like a big deal right in this moment at 12, 18 p.m. on Friday, November 5th. Sorry to date this episode for you, podcast <laughs> listeners. No worries. Um, but like what like what am I doing this minute that's going to help me achieve this week that's going to help me achieve this month that I want to achieve this year that's going to help me stay on track for where mm -hmm. we want to be in five to ten years mm -hmm. um so deep work shifted a lot of that and so I read deep work back in 2018 and it was like right before we started on the adoption journey and like thank goodness that I read that book when I did because that started to pivot my mindset into where it needed to be when I became a mom. Um, my son was born in, uh, in August of 2019 and we had already gotten like buckled down and gotten really focused on the hours that making the hours in the office count um and then when you have a child <laughs> that becomes all the more important and you mm -hmm. get even better at it but i was grateful that we had already started that prep work before him because like we i desire to run a business that enables a life that i love and i desire the work that we do to to better the lives of those we work with like um i, I guess there's just this overall getting back to your original question sorry something that guides like an overall mindset of where we want to be is focusing mm -hmm. on what matters most, what matters okay. most in our family, what mm -hmm. matters most in our business and helping our clients focus on what matters most. So again, this is something we could spend literally hours on if we wanted to, uh, but just maybe to touch on this briefly in order to get to a place where we focus on what matters most to do mm -hmm. the deep work, we have to be clear about what it is that we're trying to achieve. Right. Yes. And it sounds yeah. like you did that when you, when you read this book or maybe even prior to that, but what did that process look like? Did you literally sit down with a notebook and write out goals? Did you work with your husband through this? What, what did it look like? Yeah. So we, I think it was shortly after, maybe it was around the same time that we read, that I read deep work. No, it was shortly after deep work. I read the book traction. Um, I can't remember the guy's name who wrote it, but it's a really good book. And it's, uh, for anybody, I mean, I would say even for solo entrepreneurs, but for me and Matt who are working together, it was especially important because I was finding that I would like have these big ideas and I'd write them down and then they wouldn't be in front of me and I would forget them. And then you get to the end of the year and you're like, how did another year go by? And I still didn't accomplish mm -hmm. X, Y, or Z. And mm -hmm. so traction taught, like gave us a, a, a sort of infrastructure for like yearly meetings, quarterly meetings, and weekly meetings to help make sure that that big 
stuff that really is important, but maybe not urgent, still stays at the top of mind. Because I think that's like, if you're familiar with, I know I'm going to reference a lot of books, sorry. Stephen Covey in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People talks about Mm -hmm. the sort of the four square of urgent and important. So you've got urgent and important, urgent, not important, not important, but urgent and not important and not urgent. And so your all of your work will fall into one of those four squares. And so often because of the nature of social media and the nature of our inboxes, what's most urgent often gets pushed to the top of your to-do list. And I don't want to just get what's urgent done. I want to get what's important done, which is not always what's urgent. And so it, it, it doesn't feel as pressing at the time. But like at the end of the year, I want to look back and say, we got both the the pressing stuff and the important stuff done. So following the traction model of having a yearly meeting where we talk about, okay, how did this past year go? What are we looking forward to next year? Where where do we want to be in three years? And where do we want to do in five? Where do we want to be in five years? And how is what we're doing right now pushing us towards that one, three and five year goal? And then we have quarterly meetings Mm -hmm. And weekly meeting every Monday, just we refresh what are our quarterly, we call them quarterly rocks. Um, like what are the, the five to seven things that we're trying to accomplish this quarter? Like for this quarter, I've got my list right over here. Um, we have some products we want to add to the shop by Black Friday. We have, um, we, we want to move like email server, but like all of it, like moving email servers isn't, isn't <laughs> super, urgent. Super exciting, sexy topic. Right, yeah. right. But it's important because we <laughs> know is. that the, the more smoothly our email server works, the, mm-hmm. like the more frequently I'll be able to reach our audience. So yep. that model. But, but again, was, you know that because you've done the big picture work. And yeah. so then, and, and I'm sure you, you probably work with somebody to help you with that technical stuff. Or I, I don't know, maybe your husband does, but like being, so that you don't have to do that kind of work. And mm-hmm. you can focus on the stuff that's actually driving revenue. Right. Um, you, you've, you've created that top-down picture, that big picture. You know the things you need to do to achieve that. And then mm-hmm. you can either choose to take on those tasks yourself or you can delegate those out to somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, we just have realized like, what's the cost of me trying to do everything myself and how like, okay, so we outsource. I honestly don't even know how much I pay my editor per image. I I don't know how much I pay her. Um, she just sends. <laughs> I want you as a client her. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she like the amount that we pay her and like what that helps helps her do because she's she's a stay home mom and um, she wants to be able to be home and free with her kids. But like having the additional income that she can work on like during nap times or while her kids are in preschool, like that what we pay her to do is worth is worth every penny because taking that editing off of our plate enables me to like I have a talk coming up next week that I'm giving at um at my mastermind conference and because I'm not having to work on wedding edits from a wedding I shot last week in Hawaii I have time to prepare for that talk and I'm hoping that that talk that I give will net me a few new clients which would be tens of thousands Mm -hmm. of dollars Mm -hmm. so like the time that we spend out the money that we spend outsourcing could literally result in tens of tens of thousands of dollars in income for me because of the time that it frees up yep I'm just going to give a little shout out to photographers edit here while Do we're it. talking about outsourcing. <laughs> That's all. Uh, yeah. In fact, I'll even put I'll put the Instagram account up on the screen for anybody who's watching live. You know, just, yeah. just throwing that out there. Yeah. Um, photographers, no, it, if you're not already outsourcing your editing, like you, I mean, it was a, I think album design was the first thing we did, and mm. then I was willing to outsource editing, and it was like prying something from somebody's cold dead hands. Like it was very difficult for me <laughs> to give up, and it it I mean it pays for itself every time, every time. All right. So a couple things I want to touch on. First of all, I, you talk faster than most people that oh, I I'm know. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, 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 Listen no. to this on three quarter speed. This is, the, I was, <laughs> uh, this was a setup for a, uh, for a compliment, by the way. Oh. Uh, the, the thing that I, that I like, and I, I, the reason, one of the reasons I want to highlight this is, is for the sake of our listeners, because this is something that uh, I, I find important for me as just an individual, as a manager, as a CEO, as a company owner, working with a large team of people. Um, and I, th- I think it's really important for photographers listening in too to understand the significance of having taken the time to do exactly what you talked about, Abby, which is to go they sit down, take however long it takes, sit down to to clearly outline what it is that you're trying to accomplish, and then the plan mm-hmm. to get to that place. And you've done this; you've taken the time to do this to the extent that you can communicate at a million miles an hour all the ideas driving what it is that you do. It, it we can't effectively communicate. Um, I don't think, or teach unless we fully understand what it is that we are trying to accomplish and how to mm-hmm. go about accomplish it, that. And, and a lot of times when you hear, when you communicate with somebody, it can be a very basic conversation. It can be something as, as deep and, and extensive as you know, coming up with a business plan, for example. You, you learn very quickly whether or not somebody understands the topic that they're speaking yeah. about. 
uh, by the way that they're be able they're able to speak about it. Um, and and so I'm just thinking about how you're communicating so quickly. You're able to do that because I, I know that that's kind of normal for you. But I I like that your mind works that fast. And I also like the fact that you've actually taken the time to build this all out to the extent yeah. that you can communicate it so quickly. So that's a compliment. Yeah. Just, just to be very, very clear. And also an, an encouragement for our, for our listeners, if you can't so quickly and concisely communicate what it is that your business is about, what you're trying to accomplish, mm. what your goals are, how you're going about getting there, um, then just make sure to take the time to do so. And some of these resources, Abby, I'm going to pull these up on the screen. For anybody who's listening to the audio, I'll, I'll make sure to read these aloud. But Traction, Get a Grip on Your Business by Gina Wickman was one of the books mentioned. Uh, Deep Work. Uh, I'm looking at this all on Amazon. Deep Work Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport. Yep. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey, classic. And then Essentialism um, by Greg McEwen, and that is The Disciplined Pursuit of Less. And we'll li link to all of these in the show notes at bocapodcast.com. I also mentioned Abby's Instagram account. So for those that aren't watching live, Abby Grace photo, just like it sounds. And again, that beautiful picture of your family there. I, I really love that with your house, which is just absolutely stunning there in the background. Thank you. We love it so much. Oh, it's really, really It's always great. breaking because it's 150 years old, but it's like, <laughs> it's, it's so much fun to care for. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Casey commented on Facebook, said, these are great. Thank you. So yeah, great book recommendations for, uh, for all of our listeners. I appreciate that, Abby. I want to keep going though. We have a lot yeah. to talk about still. Um, let's get to actually, you know what it, you're again, such a great communicator. You knocked out the outsourcing <laughs> topic and the book thing all kind of at the same time. L let's actually get into the main topic that we're going to yeah. talk about today, which is this move that you've made from wedding to branding photography. And you know what, for, I, I know that you told me before we started that, um, our mutual friend who's actually been on the podcast as well. Jeff Shipley is currently working yeah. on your site. Yes, um, I'm wanna, so excited. Well, but I want to go ahead and if, if it's okay with you, just share the wedding website as it is now, just because I want to give oh, context yeah. uh, to our listeners. And so if for everybody listening, and if you go to abbygracephotography.com, by the time you look at this, if, if you're listening later, you may land on a slightly different site, but yeah, because we're launching it on Sunday. So. On Sunday, that's so <laughs> yeah. wild. Well, so then for those of you listening to the audio, you need to come back and watch the, uh, the, the live feed here, but Abby Grace photography, and this is wedding photography. Your work really is beautiful, Abby. I, Thank and you. one of the things I love about it is just the very classic nature of the, the photographic style. So I just want to throw that out there. It's very easy. And you know, this, cause we've been in the industry uh, for a long time. It's easy to kind of fall into trends and, and, uh, whatever the latest preset or action or style yeah. is. And, and I just love that your work is, is very classic in nature, but Let's let's kind of start at the beginning, if you will. What was mm -hmm. the motivation to move from wedding photography, which you're obviously really good at, into branding photography? Yeah, so it was kind of an accident. Like it was one of those things that fell into my lap in a weird way. And then other people, it took other people being like, you're really good at this. You know that, right? And you know what? And I, and I think that's like, honestly, one of the very, like the, one of the key indicators of a strength or a gift is when it's, you're so good at it, you don't realize it. And it takes other people being like, this is not normal how good you are at this thing. You know that, right? <laughs> um, so I, Natalie Frank reached out to me. She's a good friend of mine. She asked me in 2016 when she was getting ready to make the transition out of wedding photography into this community leader role that she's in and eventually an author, um, she was working with Jen Olmstead on her new website. And she mm. was like, hey, we need like a whole new batch of photos of mm -hmm. me. Can you take them? And I was like, why? <laughs> like, why would you think of me for I mean, I'm happy to, but like, why would you think of me for that? And she was like, I don't know, just like me and Jen were both like, who should we get? And both of them came to the conclusion that it should have been that it should be me, wow. which was weird. So she asked me That's to do cool. it. I showed up. I had absolutely no plan. I, I mean, I, I did like what a wedding photographer does. I'm like, where are we starting? And what are the essential details that I need to know? Great. I'll show up ready to shoot whatever crosses in front of my lens. Um, and we got some really, it was a, it was a great shoot. We got some great photos. They were really cute. They were really pretty. Um, they weren't very purposeful. And I, and, and that's mm -hmm. looking back, like they worked mm -hmm. for Natalie at the time. She mm -hmm. still uses some of them on her website. Mm -hmm. I think last time I checked, um, but there wasn't a ton of purpose in them because like branding photography in 2016 wasn't a thing. That wasn't like a thing that people, commercial photography was, but like branding photography as we know it, it did not exist yet. Um, so then I got another inquiry a little while later from someone who was like, yeah, Jasmine Starr referred me to you. And I was like, come again? Like, mm -hmm. what? 
that. <laughs> um, so I guess Jasmine had seen Natalie's photos mm. and um, this, this part, her name's Karen, she's a real estate agent in our area and she had mm. reached out to Jasmine and started to ask for recommendations and Jasmine started to pass along my name. So then I shot Karen's photos and those went really well and then it started like to pick up speed where other people were like, hey, I saw those pictures that you did for that. But like, could we get some? I think our real estate agents asked me to do, they run a team. They asked me to do their brand photos. And then it just started, it just started gaining momentum. And I was like, this is really weird. Like, why, why am I being asked to do this? And then when I realized, oh, this could actually be a really cool opportunity for us to diversify our income because we're looking, we're hoping to become parents. And, and like, I know that wedding photography is not necessarily what I want to be doing 20 years from now. It's hard on my body. Like I, I have like a, you know, a wedding hangover the next day where, you know, that feeling when you put your feet down on the floor the day after a wedding and paint shoots up your calves, (laughs) that kind of wedding hangover. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't, I don't necessarily want this to be my only source of income. So like, let's start to diversify. This branding thing seems to be, catching on like let's try that so we I decided that I wanted to launch it officially um and I to in order to start talking about it more because at that point I wasn't really talking about it I, I would post like a random I'd post like an Instagram about it every like out maybe one Instagram after each shoot um and so the the word of mouth was great it was like really working for me but I wasn't intentionally promoting it much because okay. I, I'm a firm believer in specialization and that like when you become known for a specific thing that it's easier for people to say yes because you're maybe one of three choices instead of one of 150 choices. So instead of being, oh, I'm a wedding photographer and a family photographer and I shoot high school sports and also branding portraits mm-hmm. and real estate photography. Like I was a wedding photographer and I wanted to be known as being a wedding photographer mm-hmm for the old school chic bride and groom. So I was very slow to introduce branding because I was like, if we're gonna introduce a new arm of our business, it needs to be on purpose and it needs to be a long-term plan, not just like a, hey, let's throw it out there on social media and see how it happens. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I didn't, I think one thing that people, new photographers don't understand is that when you start offering like a bunch of different products, um, across different industries and different niches, it can make you look like you're flailing. Like, I don't know what I'm about or I just need money. So I'm going to like, I'm going to offer all these different types of sessions when maybe that's not your situation, but when you're not super targeted in who you're trying to reach and what you can offer them and what kind of solution you offer them, I think it can come across as very disjointed and distracted. So we were trying to avoid that, which is why it was such a slow ramp up. So when we decided that we wanted, I'll get to the point, I promise. When we decided that I wanted <laughs> to officially introduce this as a consistent offering of mine, mm-hmm. I needed some more people in my portfolio. And so I decided to offer, uh, I reached, I, I handpicked three business owners that I wanted in my portfolio, reached out to them and was like, hey, I would love to serve you. This is what I'm thinking of doing. This is when we'd like to launch it. This is what I'd like to offer you. Are you interested? And two of the three business owners took me up on it. Um, and so I shot these brand portraits for them. It padded my portfolio enough for me to feel comfortable launching because I think when any photographer launches a new service, you need to have like three to five different shoots or cl- at least faces to show in your portfolio to, to, to show that this isn't just like a, hey, I shot one session and decided to make a web page for <laughs> right, it. Right. Um, and then so we, we like officially launched it and that was when I introduced it as a new storyline on my social media. And when I say storylines, I mean like content buckets. Like if you're familiar with the concept of, oh, have five to seven like themes or stories that you tell on social media over and over and over again. When we launched the brand photography website or like the sub page, actually, I don't even think we had a website at the beginning. I think it was just a blog post. <laughs> okay. But when we introduced it as an offer, that was when I began talking about it consistently on mm. social media. And that was when things really took off. So you, you're getting into this has been a process, right? You're not you yeah. haven't been, as you pointed out, you didn't want to be front and center about this brand or the change to the mm-hmm. brand until you were ready to go all in. And, and I'm yes, I'm a huge fan of, of that mentality. I know that there are, you know, countless examples of, of various brands, photography or otherwise, who have kind of multitasked, if you will. Yeah. But I still remember like going to and I mentioned this in the podcast before, but like going to networking events when I was shooting weddings here in the Chattanooga area and there'd be like six, seven photographers sitting around and they, they'd we're going around the room introducing ourselves to the other wedding vendors and they'd say, I'm so-and-so photography and I specialize in, and then they'd rattle off like three, four, five, six different types of yeah. photography that they quote unquote specialized in. You, know, and it really, you it, keep using that word. I do not think that word means what you think it means. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's exactly it. And, and yeah, it's, it waters down 
the significance that you could carry as a brand mm -hmm. if if you did actually special not only say you specialize in but actually follow up on on that so called yeah. specialty so i hear you on that so this has been a process in that process i guess how long has that process started how long ago did you you get into this so altogether. I shot for Natalie in 2016 That's and right. then, yeah, yeah, you said that. yeah, we, it, uh, I shot like a random, I, I couldn't even tell you the timeline of them. I shot like a random bunch of sessions between 2016, and 2019 Okay. and 2019 was when we officially l like l offered it, but I didn't okay. want to offer it until I knew I could do it well. Yeah. Um, and so like I say that because you might hear that and think, oh my gosh, you've only been doing this for two and a half years. Not, no, I've been shooting brands for five and a half years, sure. but we only officially introduced it two right. and a half years ago because again, like we, and I think this is something that it's important for photographers who are looking to transition from one type of photography into another is that you have to take into account your existing brand equity and so i already had a reputation as a higher end wedding photographer um, whose work was classic refined um, definitely up there in the pricing tiers and so when i introduced branding photography i knew that it needed to be on the same level like i couldn't have high-end wedding photography and then like budget brand photography the two needed to be in relatively the same sphere yeah well, no, the only reason I bring up a timeline is because my next question has to do with um, specializing in branding photography in a marketplace that currently in 2021 and even in the last couple of years, we'll say where branding photography has become extremely popular. Right. Mm -hmm. And very much like you see so many photographers getting into the education space, the move yeah. to branding photography has been this not a mad rush, but has there's been a pretty big move in that direction. So. I guess to that end, and because, I mean, and really to our conversation about the significance of specializing, how are you making it into the space without kind of getting lost in the mix and, and being able to maintain the, I guess, the unique brand position, the distinction as a brand, as a brand photographer? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I think it helps that I was early to market. Um, I was one of the first people to like declare that I was doing brand photography. And when I say one of the first people, I mean like, Everyone else quickly followed suit. Like, like a, I, honestly, I think it was when the pandemic hit that you had a lot of wedding photographers who were panicking um, and who were like, oh my gosh, all my wedding revenues dried up, so I need to add something else. Brand photography, That's that seems easy enough. I could do that. And it's a totally understandable shift. Um, but I think, and uh, Cal Newport, the guy who wrote Deep Work, also has another book called So Good They Can't Ignore You. It's based on a Steve Martin quote. And they were like, hey, mm. Steve Martin, like, how did you get to be so good? And like, how did you stand out in a crowd? And he's like, it's easy to be so good they can't ignore you. Mm. Um, and like, I mean, there's something to be said for that. Like, why does like, okay, how do you stand out from the masses? Be so good they can't ignore you. Um, it's It's been intentional. And I, and I don't want that to come across as like snotty or prideful. I want it to come across as an intentional. Oh, we, we lost. Are you still there, Abby? We, uh, well... We lost Abby there. We'll, we'll hang around and see if maybe she's able to log back in. And I hope that we're still broadcasting out there. Jill, if you're watching live, um, let, let me know what. Are you still there, Abby? Oh, yeah. I can. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can now. Yeah. Yeah. OK. I'm, I'm going to bring you back in. I didn't want to like leave the, leave the camera frozen on your you're making kind of a funny face. So I, I took yep, it off I saw camera. It. it was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. Good. So we're, we're good. We're good. Jill's saying yep. we're good. All right. Cool. So okay. pick back up where you left off. <laughs> Do you want me to just start over? Sure. Why not? Okay. Um, okay. So I think it helps that I was early to market. Um, and I, like, again, I started shooting for brands in 2016 before branding photography was a thing. We only officially launched branding photography probably like a year before everyone else started scrambling to market. And I think the pandemic was a big driver of that yeah. um, because you had wedding photographers whose income streams all of a sudden dried up and they're like, True. I've got to find some way to, to continue to earn. Brand yeah. photography seems easy enough, which is a totally understandable yeah. um, thing for people to do. Yeah. But there is a, um, there's a book, Cal Newport, the guy who wrote Deep Questions, sorry, Deep Work, uh, also has a book called So Good They Can't Ignore You. And it's based on a Steve Martin quote. Right. Someone was like, how did you get to be so good? Or how did you get to like stand out from the crowd or whatever? And he's like, it's easy. Be so good. They can't ignore you. Mm. And I think there is something to be said for that. Like, how do you stand out in a crowd when a bunch of other people are doing exactly what you're trying to do with the same gear that you're using, using the same tonic website template modified with their brand colors? Shout how out do tonic. You, how, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, 
how do you differentiate yourself and you and I mean that's like where it comes time to dig in like study branding study marketing study funnel design study copywriting like know what it is and know how your clients are trying to use those images because I think what we see And we see this, I teach a course called Brand Photography Academy that is specifically for wedding and family photographers looking to move into the branding sphere because I think what happens a lot, not I think, I know this happens a lot, you've got wedding and family photographers who need to diversify so they're like, it's fine, I'll just add branding photography because I know how to use a camera and I'm good with people. Branding photography is very different from family photography and wedding photography in that it is, so weddings and families are more about documenting relationships, whereas, um, Brand photography is about conceptual image creation. So how can we take an intangible concept and turn it into a tangible photograph to help communicate what it is that this client does or what it is that's so special about how mm. they do what they do? So it's it's a lot more research and, and work ahead of time. And okay. it's very proactive, not reactive. And so ah, when you sense. can... When you can walk into a branding shoot knowing exactly what you want to say, how you want to say it, how you're going to say it, you will start inevitably, you will start to pull away from the group of people who are just showing up doing exactly what I did in 2016, ready to shoot whatever it crosses in front of your lens. And I think that's the key differentiators that I started doing that very early on when almost nobody else was. And so it inevitably started to stand out of like, whoa, your brand photos are really different. Like, how did you capture that entire brand's vibe in one image? It's like, it's, it wasn't easy, but I put a lot of thought into it ahead of time instead of showing up on set, hoping that the perfect photo would just come together on its own or that the like inspiration Mm -hmm. fairy would show up Mm -hmm. so that like board of the you know I, I there was like this pivotal moment where I was scrolling through social media and I saw this brand session that somebody else had done and they did what a wedding photographer would do they're like where's the good light the good light is outside therefore I will shoot my client outside but like what doesn't make sense is a client sitting in an office chair on the sidewalk with their laptop in their lap like on the literal sidewalk in the city. None, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> with wedding photography, that's okay though. It doesn't It doesn't necessarily have to make sense, but with brand photography, it does. Because if it doesn't make sense, yeah. then it's gonna pull the client's, or sorry, the viewer's attention away from what, whatever it is the business owner's trying to say. So like- Yeah, when you when, said that too, it just made me think of something I'd see on like iStock Photo or, or, yeah, or some yeah, yeah, random yeah. site like that, that they've, this is a commercial piece like you said, with no intention, no context, no yeah. connection to the actual individual photographer. Like it's pretty, but it's not purposeful. And that's yeah. the thing about brand photography. It has to be purposeful. Like what are we trying to say? How are we trying to say it? So like your job as the brand photographer is to get really curious and figure out what is going to stop the scroll. Like studying social media, sure, but like studying how your clients are trying to use those photos and who it is they're trying to attract. And again, getting into the mindset of their target audience, not just into the mindset of the client. So getting curious and studying like, and that's where I think, that's honestly what I think separates the chaff from the wheat is because I think there are a lot of photographers who um, are just like, hey, this is just like another income stream I could add on. And if their clients are happy with that, that's fine. But like, I live in a, like an all or nothing type of world and I'm also very competitive. And so mm. I was like, if I'm going to do this, I want to be the best. Mm-hmm. And so I like set out to try to become that and studied and got curious. And um, I think when you can do, when you can commit to doing that um, and being very intentional and proactive in what it is you're trying to say, that's where brand photography really starts to like make magic for your clients and starts to get you noticed. Okay. So you talked about the significance of intentionality and it is a cliche these word these days because we hear it so much but it has real weight and and purpose um, we have to be intentional in the photographs that we're capturing so that they actually not only tell this photographer's story but ultimately speak to the needs of that 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 that, that photographer is meeting uh, mm-hmm. through their brand so this is something to keep in mind I, I i guess on the flip side to avoid doing is is being a reactive photographer right if you're going to yeah. be a brand photographer are there one or two other things that you've learned over the last few years that you would want to tell photographers make sure you avoid doing this as you're making a move into brand photography yeah i mean the number one thing is make sure you avoid approaching branding like you would weddings or families because they are not the same it's a, it's a totally different mindset um but then i would also say avoid emulating what everyone else is doing because the point of brand photography is to get your client noticed Mm. and if you're only ever pulling inspiration like from a pinterest board of like Mm -hmm. 
15, okay, let's say you're shooting for a life coach and you go on Pinterest and you search life coach branding photos and then you pin all of those and basically recreate them. All you've done is added more white noise to the to the landscape. So what you need to be doing is pulling inspiration from areas outside of where your client immediately lives and works. And I don't mean geographically. I mean, if you. Oh, we lost her again. Abby, are you still there? Looks like we may have some connection issues today. Uh, Abby, we're, we're hanging here waiting. And uh, whenever you log back in, just say something and we'll make sure we, we can keep going. We'll pick up where, pick up where we left off. And by the way, for anybody listening in, I, we've got a, a really nice little crowd today that's joined the conversation. I love that. This is a very relevant topic to many. Please, 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 as we're going along, uh, and we'll bring Abby back in here in just a second. It looks like we got her back. But uh, as, as we're having conversation, make sure that you ask questions to Abby along the way relevant to what it is that we're talking about because um, she's obviously a wealth of knowledge and I want you to take advantage of the opportunity to ask those questions. All right, Abby, we're, we got you back. Sorry. <laughs> no funny faces, no frozen screen. We're good to go. Um, so, but you were talking about the significance of actually creating something that is different. Again, yeah. this is, this is, I'm glad that you bring this up because I see this, I mean, I've seen this in wedding photography for years. Photographers tend to just kind of follow suit and do whatever everybody else is doing yeah. rather than looking for a way to set themselves apart and doing something different. And so it's a really good reminder, but I want to shift then to the things that they should be doing. And you told me before we got it, before we got started that, um, you've got kind of four big ideas that drove your ability to grow this, this business. And I'd love to dig into those with you. Yeah. So if I were advising a new photographer on how to pivot into or like start a branding photography business, my number one recommendation is start with a few beta clients. Um, and when I say beta clients, I mean clients that you approach, people that you have handpicked and said, like, I would like to shoot for your business because I think there's some kind of transformation I could offer you. I do not recommend choosing business owners who are like, ooh, I really like what you've got already got going on. Can I produce like more of that mm. and then claim you as a client? Because we've, we've actually had that happen. Like one of my favorite clients um, had someone approach her and was like, I love your brain photos. I'd love to come shoot some for you. And she's like, no, I'm good. Like I've already, like Abby shoots these for me. <laughs> um, so I do not recommend shooting for like approaching somebody who's already got a good thing going on who doesn't need what you're offering because either they'll say yes and 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 not fully appreciate what it is that you're offering or um they'll turn you down because they don't need it so i would say find someone whose business you think either has a lot of potential or like is already growing but you've noticed that there's like maybe a lack of consistency mm -hmm. in their in their visual content and mm -hmm. offer to create new content for them and i'd say when you approach them be very clear about what it is that you're offering and how long the session is. Do not use the word free because it will be it will it it will not land the way that you want it to. We don't want this to come across as, "Hey, can you do me a solid and let me shoot you?" Sure. It's, "Hey, I noticed that you have this need and I think I could help fill that need and as a thank you for allowing me to sort of experiment on you, I will allow you to use the high resolution files for your business with a commercial release. Um, By the way, so, I have to, I, you may have seen this, I popped it up on the screen. Cindy was asking, how did you find your first client? So I think this yeah. is a, a beautiful answer to that question as well. And, yeah. And I'll also just mention while, while we're on it that uh, Grace also said so interested in this. So it sounds like a topic that people are very much keyed into. I love the idea yes. of a beta client. I don't think I've ever heard it like presented that way. Yeah. We think about beta when we think about software or maybe websites, but um, yeah. actually considering them as a, a test subject of sorts. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying, not not pitching it to them as a freebie so much as, hey, we're building this thing and I'd, I, I see there's a really wonderful opportunity here maybe to refine mm -hmm. your brand. Would love to be able to take these photographs for you. And you're actually... Yeah. Kind of like you said earlier, you're not reactive in this. You're actually proactive. You're reaching out with an idea in mind as far as the way that you would approach the session and you're yeah. making an offer to them. Yes. Yeah. So when you make the offer to them, like, again, finding someone who you think you can offer a transformation to. And then when you pitch it to them as a beta client, like being clear, like, hey, I will help advise you on where we're going to shoot this and like what you should wear. And I'm going to guide you along the process and be clear with them, like, because when I when I pitched my beta clients, I was like, this is a thing that we are planning to offer in May of 2019. So I probably reached out to them in February. Um, is this something you would have time for before then? Is this something that you could that you would need? Um, I think this could be really helpful for you. Would you be willing to partner with me on this? Um, and then once they said yes, we did have them sign contracts because I think that that helps 
people understand the weight of what they're entering into. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I heavily influenced how those sessions went. They mm -hmm. were still on brand for the client, but sure. I was like, hey, we're gonna need to rent a location. Or if they were like, this is my house, do you think this pl this place would work? I felt very free to say, actually, I don't think that's gonna get you the best results. Why don't we look somewhere like this? Um, and so like, I took them through the, the, the um, workflow that I would plan to take any client through. And I think signing that contract is helpful for both you and for them because it helps you treat it like a real client instead of just like, oh, it's my friend. Like she won't care. It's not like you need to treat them like a real client because you need to have a test subject to be able to show people this is what it looks like sure. when I do a good job. Um, so then once we had the beta clients, I, I mentioned I pitched three, two of them ended up working out. Um, once we had, uh, once I had like my film back from them and, and like everything edited and, and a more robust portfolio we officially launched it and i again i don't think i actually had a website when we when we first announced it i think i put it in a blog post and then like made a big deal out of it on social media and like momentum started from there and six months later i realized i should probably have a website for this like a permanent place where people can go to find more information so we had yeah. jeff come in and make a sub page on mm. abbygracephotography.com where you had to click over to find branding the um so I would say step one, find yourself some beta clients. Step two, prep a website, not a blog post. Um, there needs to be a perm because I think when you when you prep a website, what that tells people is I'm seriously invested in this enough to have spent at least four hours creating, a, you know, a, a customizing a template for it. Yeah. Um, and also and, maybe not kind of watering down the existing brand or the new one yes. that you're creating too, right? Creating yes. that distinction between the two. Yeah, having a separate website because what we were originally, I had thought we would do was create the home page, which would be like, hey, brides and brands, here's how I can help solve your problems. But like the problems that brides are facing are very different than what brands were facing. And so if I tried to talk to both, I was going to have to water my message down to the point mm -hmm. where it was unpalatable and boring. Mm -hmm. And so rather than doing that, I was like, let's have two very specific messages, two very specific people we're talking to and talk to them on separate pages. So like brides, if you're a bride, click here. If you're a brand, click here. Um, and that worked for a long time, and that is how I advise other people to do it. If you're serving multiple clients with different services, segment your audience. You mm -hmm. do that with email lists. Mm -hmm. You should do it with your website too. Mm -hmm. um, and so then when you go to launch it, making a big deal out of it, like turning it into an event. Ashlyn Carter talks about this in her course, Prime to Launch, which is an amazing course for anyone who's thinking about launching anything, but she talks about turning launch day into some sort of an event. You could do a countdown on social media, you could do a giveaway, you could have an in-person event, um, but turning it into a big huzzah so that it's like, this is the day things started, take notice of me, I'm here, let's go. Um, as opposed to like kind of quietly eking it in there and people are like, Wait, are, do you offer, do you offer brands? Do you, I think I saw something on your website about that. Like that's the thing you do, right? Make, be very clear. Either you do this or you don't. Um, so then once you've launched it, so step one, beta session, step two, prep a site, step three, launch it, step four, sell socially. So the, like, and this is again, something I teach inside our course, social selling, which is so many, you, you get so many photographers who, call, who go online and they're like, uh, here's a pretty picture that I took double tap please like it's like show and tell you know like and and that's not it's not engaging and it's not memorable and so instead when you can talk about a problem that your client had and how you helped to solve it mm -hmm. it makes the conversation much more organic and it introduces the idea to your audience oh i have that problem too she might be able to solve that for me so we call this social selling because it's still selling your product but it's not being it's there's no like direct call to action like inquire now for q1 availability like it's just talking about ways that you helped your client. So like, for example- Also, please don't um, say Q1 availability to your, your photography clients. Unless, I guess, unless they're business owners because- Well, so that, that's who I serve is business right, owners. Right, right. So that's, like, that's fair, that's fair. It just sounded yeah. very corporate. I was like, Q1, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, right. you're selling yeah wedding owners. photographers, you probably don't want to tell your brides <laughs> now booking for Q3 2022. You're like, no, right. none of them are gonna, yeah. Um, but so, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so for example, um, social selling, like my client, Ashlyn Carter, um, she, we, I did brand photos for her this past February. She had just moved um, from one house to another and Ashlyn's like home and personal life are like factored into her brand. So the fact that she moved, we like, that kind of, she needed photos in her new space. Yeah. Um, but she was six months pregnant. And mm -hmm. she was like, I'm worried about shooting because I need these photographs to be evergreen, which means I can use them any time of year. And it's not gonna specifically harken back to a particular time and place. Um, 
So one of the challenges was trying to photograph for Ashlyn in a way that did not emphasize her bump. Um, and so I posted on social media a series, I think it was like six to eight photographs, a carousel of six to eight images from Ashlyn's mm-hmm. shoot, mm-hmm. and talked about how, like, you remember in the 90s with um, – with like sitcoms when someone was pregnant you could tell someone was pregnant because they only ever shot them from like here up <laughs> or like they always had like a pillow or like a blanket in front of them i talked about that in the caption of like this was my 90s sitcom challenge of like how can we photograph ashlyn in a way that does not make her look pregnant <laughs> not hiding her pregnancy but just not emphasizing it and like here's the proof look how well we did it mm. and like i mean that's that's incredible marketing but but it wasn't like Make sure to inquire now for current rates, like slots going fast. I didn't have to say any of that. All I had to do was show here was a problem my client had and here was a solution that I provided. Yeah. And again, I, I so, I'm so tempted to just park here because it, it's so, this is something that we so desperately need in the photography industry in general, especially branding photography, but just in general, photographers need to talk less about themselves and about how, mm. and instead about how they solve problems, meet needs and or desires of their clients. That it, yes. There's such incredible opportunity. It's amazing. We try to be cute and creative and do all these things on our websites when at the end of the day, if we just said, explain what problem we solved in a few words and how we're going to meet that need or that desire... Um, it's, it's amazing how our conversion level or rates would go up if we just make it that simple and that clear. Yeah. Because then you're not leaving it to the client to figure out, wait, do I need what you have? Do I need what you're offering? It's, Hey, do you have this problem? If you Mm do, here's a solution for it. Like if I just called myself a brand photographer, like sure, I shoot brands and it's like, well, anybody with a brand could come and, and inquire with me, which might be fine. Like that might be fine. But I am really, really good mm-hmm. at shooting for people with mm-hmm. numerous streams of income who are speaking at a high level. We're talking like funnel design, sales mm-hmm. page design, like mm-hmm. CTAs on each of their opt-in pages, which like some of that language will not make sense to people who are listening because it's, <laughs> it's, so, it there, yeah. it's so in the marketing sphere of things. Yeah. But like that's where I really sing. Yeah. And so I want to be really clear about my value prop when I say that I am a, 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 a brand photographer for high performing mm-hmm. sales driven creative small business owners. It makes it a no duh. Of course you're going to book me if you have that. Exa- like when Caitlin booked with me, it was that there was no other option. There was no other photographer that she was considering. It was Abby offers a specific problem mm. or Abby, Abby offers a specific solution <laughs> to a problem that yeah. I definitely have. So well, of course I'm going to book her. It's not, I'm not looking at anybody else. I love it. Yeah. And it should be that straightforward. Uh, Mattia, and I hope I'm pronouncing yeah. that correctly. She said, so you recommend separate Instagram accounts as well in addition to separate websites. I don't necessarily. Um, I have never maintained two separate Instagram accounts. I created a separate Instagram account for my family um, and have never once posted to it. So like I'm I'm really bad at um, social media in general. So I think the question here becomes like, are, are you already good at managing one social media account? Can you imagine doubling that? Or, or at least coming up with, two, with a separate place where you can post stuff. I'm bad at maintaining one. Therefore, the thought of maintaining two is absolutely out of the question. I think okay. done is better than perfect here. Mm. Um, if, the, if the alternative to having one Instagram account with a couple of different storylines on it is having two separate accounts that you never update, then the better option is to have one. Fair enough. Um, if you think you can do both, go for it. But like for the reasons that you described earlier, right? As far as the website, because I, I would just I can imagine that the brand would get watered down if it's all one feed and you've got wedding photography and brand photography and then some random sports photography. Like, yeah, that would be yeah. My and concern. I think that becomes I think that becomes like a a bigger question of like should you really be offering all of those things hmm. in gen- and and that's I'm not fair. I can't speak to anybody else's business and tell you, yes, you should or or no, you shouldn't because I think there is a need, especially if like in your, if you're in a smaller town, like a really small town and you're like one of two photographers and you have people who are like, I want you to shoot my wedding, but I also want you to photograph me and my babies and my pregnancy and like, okay, my kids are getting older. Will you photograph their birthday party? Like if you want to do all of that and you want to be the go-to sort of catch-all photographer you can make that a brand. Like you can make that the like, hey, I'm your photographer from the time you get married to the time your kids graduate. Like I'm there for all of it. You could call yourself like a lifetime photographer. I don't know. Um, But that needs to be an intentional message that you're curating so that it doesn't look like you're a, sure, I can do that photographer. Because I think that's the issue people run into when when you do have too much going on if you're not intentionally telling people I'm doing this on, I'm doing all these things on purpose, then it looks like you're just sort of reacting to, sure, I can do that. So for the, coming back to the question of 
separate Instagram accounts, I don't necessarily think that is as important as having two separate pages on your website because with your Instagram account, you can still talk to an individual client within the caption or like within the Instagram series of Instagram highlights. Um, I just think when you're choosing to serve like again it just comes back to like what's the overall purpose of the of your business like are you the lifetime photographer if so mm -hmm. that better be really clear and in consistently your... everywhere mm -hmm. yeah that's mm -hmm. another important thing too because I, I see like sometimes in fact a lot of times you see one thing on a photographer's website another thing on social that the brand doesn't align there and that yeah. would be that's why we're working on website updates right now because <laughs> yeah. my instagram account says brand photographer ah. and you go to my website and it's like brides and you're like this is something something is yeah, confusing what's happening here, here. yeah yeah cindy yeah. says how did you speak to brides and business owners at the same time so i never tried to do that um i was either with any given caption in on social media i was either speaking to my brides or I was speaking to brand owners. Um, and I think when you can just get in, Ashlyn calls it um, her one reader, like being super clear on who the one person is that you're talking to. Some people call it an ideal client art avatar, target audience, being super specific that when you're writing for that one person, you are only writing for that one person, that cuts through the noise. So like, um, we had a wedding back in May and there were these two adorable little flower girls and they were like playing red light, green light through um, the family formals. And it created this really fun moment of mm. the family laughing in the background and the, these two crazy flower girls running past. Mm -hmm. And so in the caption, I talked about how on wedding days, these are some of my favorite moments. Like when you just like let kids be crazy and you have the chaos and like you capture it and it's joyful. I wasn't trying to speak to business owners at that point because I was only talking about like what I was talking about in that moment had nothing to do with business owners. When I was talking about Ashlyn and the like 90s sitcom pregnancy situation, that has nothing to do with bride. So I didn't even try. I was There was no part of me that was like, how can we make this relevant for my wedding client? So I think who, wherever you are, be all there. Speak to that one person at a time. And that's the great thing about like social media is you have those captions. You have the ability to put text over top of an Instagram story. So like utilize your highlights, like have a highlights for weddings, have a highlights for brands. Um, and, and I just like keep those in their little own ecospheres. Um, ecosphere, that's not the right word. Ecosystem, sphere, whatever. Um, and, and talk only to that client within that small circle. And then when you move over to brands, talk only to brands in that small circle too. Cool. Specificity all day long. Yes. That, that's a, an important theme here that I'm seeing. So I'm, I'm taking notes as you're talking, Abby. Um, number one, the first step was to bring in beta clients and you kind of broke down how to do that, create a unique website dedicated yep. to this brand. Uh, third was the significance of social selling that highlights or focuses on the value proposition at hand. Um, and I think there's a fourth step in my right. So three was launch it, like make an event oh, out three of launching was it. it. Okay. Okay. And four was social selling. Bad, bad, bad note taking on my part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Cause you were talking about launching it and, and making it a, making it an, event. an event, like something yeah. that, that sticks out and makes, helps them remember. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Man. I, I normally do really good at this. And here I'm, I, I told Abby for everybody listening or watching, I told, I was like, look, if you see me look down, I'm literally taking notes with pen and paper here. And I somehow missed the point. Okay, that's totally my bad. All right, for everybody who is listening in and watching, um, I know this is a kind of a loaded topic and we've just kind of scratched the surface. Abby, I, I want, you're, you're such a good teacher and you've got so much information to offer. And by the way, nobody, you didn't ask me to do this, but I'd love to kind of highlight where our listeners and viewers can go if they want to learn more, if they want to hire you as a consultant, if you do that, what, what does this whole process look like? Yeah, so we offer, like I have my sort of services side where I, I photograph brand portraits and then I do teach. Um, and so if you guys, we have a freebie. It's um, the nine shots that I take at pretty much every brand session. Um, and it's that, that's at education.abbygracephotography.com slash N-I-N-E dash shots. Um, we do, I also do um, a, like free education over on our Facebook group, Brand Photographers Assemble. If you guys want to check in there, um, you can find me on social media, Abby Grace Photo. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the two two sides of things that we do. We've got the services side and then the educational side. We don't do consulting at this point um, just because the, the energy that I have to pour into education, I love pouring into being able to educate a lot of people at one time, which is why we came up with Brand Photography Academy. Um, but then we've also got that Facebook group where we do some free education in there too. Okay. And, I, I pulled and we up, have our shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so many different things that I wasn't able to write all of them down, but I did pull up education.abbygracephotography.com. And by the way, for anybody listening in, we're going to link to all these resources in the show notes at bocapodcast.com. 
Uh, so when we push this out on audio and we, we launch uh, officially uh, push out the individual episode, we'll make sure in the show notes, all of these links are there. But if you go to education.abbygracephotography.com, that's a great place to start. Beautiful site, by the way. I mean, this is, Thank you. And, and I have to, I have to go ahead and give a shout out since we're, we're talking about your site Tetonic, because their, yes. their work really is just so beautiful. It's and, and, um, I, I just love them as a brand. I love them as people. And, and, um, so tonic T O N I C site S I T E shop.com. Uh, we'll just give them a little shout out there, but, uh, again, education.abbygracephotography.com. We'll make sure to put this in the show notes at bocapodcast.com. Abby, and I, I truly, I can't thank you enough for not only making time, but like seriously just sharing so much practical information for all of our listeners today. This has been a, a massive value add for them. So thank you for that. It was my joy. Thanks for having me.